Привіт! I'm Taya from Ukraine and welcome to my channel again. Today, guys, we have a great video. Firstly, I will show you the mood in Ukraine. Nice day, we met with Andrei. Uh, something will be going to happen. <laughs> and something is happening actually right now while we're recording this video. So, you know this guy from the channel, Operator Starsky. Hello, my friends. Firstly, I want you to introduce yourself to my foreigners. What you doing on uh, your channel? Uh, my channel is dedicated to all the people of the world who support Ukraine, all the defenders from around the globe. I have a blog in English since early days of this war. And we make videos almost every single day, unlike me, uh, firstly. And I recommend him because he is very into this um, news, so all updates all the time. And he's more experienced in, you know, the war stuff and political stuff. So tell me more about your military experience. What's your main job? So he's not just a YouTuber, you know, just talking, uh, blah, blah, blah. But he has experience in military in Ukraine. It's blah, 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 plus pew, pew, pew. Uh -huh. uh, since 2014, I served in the Special Force Police. Uh, later in 2015, uh, I joined the Rapid Response Brigade of the National Guard of Ukraine as a soldier, as a machine gunner, soldier, as a, mm -hmm. as a private. In Ukraine, soldier is a rank, actually. It's not like a profession, it's, it's a rank. It's, it's uh, uh, yeah. e equals to private. Later, I became a machine gunner, a sergeant of a platoon. So, I met this invasion in Post tunnel mm -hmm. on the very first day. Mm -hmm. uh, Epicenter, guys. Yeah, Post tunnel airport. Uh, we were the ones who met uh, those Russian paratroopers, DVD, VDV men. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, glorious Russian Spetsnaz, Orthodox ninja guys that know how to fight using Orthodox cross, using the power of their ancestors and drink a lot and break plastic bottles over their heads. Firstly, I want to say about the beginning of the war and the mood of people and how actually it influenced us. So, uh, is it is it pri private or you can tell me like what you told me, like at the beginning of the war your life was going great? For the invasion, my life started to improve because I divorced. I started attending gym. Uh, I quit smoking, which I was so so much proud of. How you, as a military person, keep your mental health clean, your mind clean? What do you have any specific habits? Do you know to stay strong? Yeah, me, as a civilian, yeah, of course, I'm influenced, and uh, it's also hard for me. But it, you know, for military guys, it's even harder. Like when you experience all these explosions and the war and stuff. Good food. Mm -hmm. Often, <laughs> uh, meeting friends, not so often, <laughs> and uh, going to like shooting range, mm. uh, things like that. Not like I miss shooting in my life, but uh, still it's something that I like to do. In terms of your mental health, you gotta do what you like. At mm -hmm. least sometimes, in order to reward yourself with something that brings you pleasure, which mo which is mostly sushi in my uh, case, because like when the war started, I began eating sushi like crazy, like several times a week, because I thought uh, you only live once. We came to such place uh, on this territory of exposition center as the zoo. You can touch and feed the animals and the animals are right over here waiting for your snacks hungry goats <laughs> oh i didn't uh, see the roosters here there are also different birds and different kind of uh lemurs, i guess this is a very nice place for kids to relax yes you want some and you too yes here you go <laughs> now, who is this demanding guy? It's a pony or it's a horse. I will eat it all. No, 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 you, you cannot eat the paper. 
That's funny. Kids, kids are shocked. They <laughs> and what is the paper? <laughs> what? <laughs> this is the best place to visit, like if you're here with your family. You are for the best place. I nearly, I nearly In broke my head, I swear. That llama <laughs> was trying to eat me. <laughs> Oh my god, that's so cute! Is that... is that alpaca? Yes, yes! He looks like one. This poor guy... They... They told us that he's a survivor from Bucha. So they survived this animal and he... They said that he likes to get in touch with people. Now he's vegan, so maybe I will not disturb him. <laughs> Indeed, he likes it because he lay down. The man said to us he will lay down if I am going to pet him. Well, I hope his uh, mental <laughs> mental wellness is fine right now. The rooster's name is Timothy. Very friendly guy. I have such a um, interesting question on my channel. I saw such um, comments of foreigners when I should, uh, you know, just going out in the city. They see a civilian man or just you know ma young men who are walking in the street, and some people are saying, uh, "Why not all men are in the war right now?" If my country was invaded, <laughs> I will join military. Uh, it's a normal question from a civilian audience that uh, don't uh, that doesn't really know how how the army works mm -hmm. because uh, army units consists uh, consist of battalions, companies, platoons, squads. That is some precise in, amount of men, like thirty men make a platoon. 120 men make a uh, company, etc., etc. In case we're talking about a uh, mechanized brigade, it means that your brigade should have uh, armored vehicles that can uh, carry only so much men. Uh, that's why uh, you cannot have like a battalion of men without any support of vehicles. Also, if we're talking about combined arms, uh, the, the artillery, and there's a lot of nuances, actually. We only accept as many people into army as required, mm -hmm. basically. That's why today you don't see, like, uh, all the streets of uh, Kiev, for example, uh, full of like women and children only. Mm -hmm. uh, you see all kinds of people because again, uh, economy must work. Yes, yes. Business. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah, uh, business must function because uh, our country will collapse if uh, our economy is not running. My dad, he wanted to join the military, but my dad, you know, he's fifty. 54, 55, so he's not the young man with a specific uh, major of uh, in the army, so he was kind of rejected, so our army is not uh, uh, craving for men or just humans uh, <laughs> in general, they need the, you know, not the quantity, they need the qualities. Do you think as a military person it's right for civilians to have fun and enjoy the life, you know, to explain more to my viewers, when I scroll my feed and I see people post when they go out and to have a wedding or celebration or just, you know, normal weekend at the restaurant, whatever, uh, some people, some civilians will, will have a discussion, you should not do that, but if you do, do not post, we have a war, uh, you know, it's not right. In 2015, I had my first deployment mm -hmm. uh, in the area of Krasnohorivka. And when I returned, uh, I had uh, some some really hard time, you know, walking around, seeing people 
celebrating, having rest together, entertaining each other and stuff, or going out to like clubs and cinemas. I arrived from a combat zone that is like 700 kilometers away from Kiev, and I was like, like it's a parallel universe. It, it's not supposed yeah. to be like that. But after a while, I realized that that's exactly why I was there. So our people could feel safe and happy and continue living their normal life. So my personal opinion is that uh, that's exactly what we are fighting for. So our, our people could be safe and secure and uh, have good time. At the same time, I received a lot of commentaries from uh, my viewers who could say that uh, they have chance to do that because we are protecting them from Russians. How you see the finish, the end of the war and uh, people's emotions about this? Do you think it would be a total relief and, uh, you know, ideal peaceful life as before? Or you see that? You can say that there will be some struggles to actually reborn re their country. I think there will be a lot of struggle because we will have to rebuild it. Mm -hmm. uh, we will have to find uh, ways to receive reparations uh, from countries like Russia, Iran, Belarus, of course. We still have uh, issues like corruption, yeah. things like that. So we will have to combat those. But I'm highly optimistic regarding our future, and to me, uh, there will be two conditions, okay? Mm -hmm. First condition is that there will be zero Russian troops on the Ukrainian territory, and the uh, internationally recognized borders will be restored. Another condition is that uh, all kinds of m my friends will arrive to Ukraine, and uh, we will be able to finally see each other in person it's a separate thing but there's also a restaurant uh with a nice pond i remember the restaurants i still see one and uh, it's kind of like a fancy restaurant called frog by the way Just a small kiosk of bubble waffle, bubble waffle, and I think Andrei is lack of shooting in his life. Uh, I uh, it's funny that he decided to shoot actually. <laughs> ah, now I understand why I decided to shoot. Uh, now we see a picture when you can shoot. Oh yeah. If you want to see the a video with us, more <laughs> collaboration, please check this video on Andrei Operator Starsky channel. There will be another video. And thank you for watching. Subscribe, share, like, and comment. Yes, that helps to promote my channel. And see you in the next episode. Bye.